Hello guys, welcome to Medicaid. In this video, we are going to be talking about a very common condition that is bronchial asthma. So, what is bronchial asthma? Let us define bronchial asthma slowly. Bronchial asthma is a chronic disorder of the conducting airways which is caused by an immunological reaction. It is characterized by three features. One, episodes of bronchoconstriction. Two, inflammation. And the last one is increased mucus secretion. So what happens in bronchial asthma is there is increased sensitivity to a variety of stimulus. After we know the definition, let us know how bronchial asthma manifests. Usually the patients with bronchial asthma have the following symptoms. They have wheezing, they have breathlessness, they have cough and they have tightening of the chest. Now, let us learn about the classification of asthma. Asthma is classified into two types, atopic or extrinsic and non-atopic or intrinsic. So now, let us distinguish between atopic and non-atopic type of asthma. So, the first criteria we are going to be distinguish atopic and non-atopic is under pathogenesis. In atopic, the pathogenesis is due to type 1 hypersensitivity reaction in which there is allergen sensitization, there is activation of immune system. But in non-atopic type of bronchial asthma, the mechanism is non-immune, that is immune system is not involved. And the stimulus is usually intrinsic body stimulus, whereas in atopic there is extrinsic stimuli. So, the second factor is age. Usually, atopic type of bronchial asthma manifests in childhood, whereas the non-atopic type manifests in adulthood. The third criteria we are going to be taking is family history. In atopic type of bronchial asthma, there is a positive family history, that is, you can see that bronchial asthma is present in the family members. And in non-atopic, we usually have a negative family history. So, the next criteria is prior allergic reaction. When a patient who is suffering from atopic bronchial asthma is asked for any prior allergic reaction, there is a positive history. That is, he would have suffered from a previous allergy. But in non-atopic, there is no prior allergic reaction. So the next distinguishing factor is IgE levels, that is immunoglobulin E levels. As I told you before, that atopic type of bronchial asthma is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So, there is an obvious increase in the IgE levels. But whereas, the non-atopic type of bronchial asthma is non-immune mediated. Hence, the IgE levels are normal. The next criteria is skin test. When a skin test is done on a person suffering with atopic bronchial asthma, there is positive skin test that is a triple response is seen. Whereas, the skin test is negative in case of non-atopic type of bronchial asthma. The last criteria I am going to be telling is examples. So, atopic type of bronchial asthma is seen in allergic asthma, occupational asthma and allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Whereas, non-atopic type of bronchial asthma is seen in drug induced asthma and asthma in viral infections, asthma due to cold and exercise induced asthma. So after I told you about the classification of asthma, now I will tell you the factors which can trigger asthma or triggers. So viral infections of the respiratory tract can be a potent trigger, exercise can trigger asthma, irritants such as smokes and fume can trigger asthma. Cold air can be a cause which can trigger asthma and stress is the usual cause of asthma nowadays. Previously, we saw the classification of asthma into atopic or extrinsic and non-atopic or intrinsic. Now, let us see the classification of asthma based on the triggers which trigger it. Based on the triggers, asthma can be classified into seasonal asthma which is usually in the cold season exercise induced asthma, drug induced asthma, occupational asthma and the last one which is asthmatic bronchitis. So now I will be explaining you two types of asthma.
asthma the first one is drug induced asthma so what is drug induced asthma so drug induced asthma is the asthma which is usually seen after drugs are taken the usual drugs which are found to be inducing asthma are aspirin and other nsaids so how does aspirin and other nsaid cause asthma so usually what happens is prostaglandin e2 inhibits the formation of leukotrienes b4 c4 d4 and e4 leukotriene b4 c4 d4 and e4 are the mediators of asthma now when aspirin is given we all know that aspirin is a inhibitor of cox enzyme the same enzyme which is required for the formation of pg e2 so when aspirin is introduced into the body it inhibits the cox enzyme so that there is a decrease in synthesis of pg e2 when there is decrease in synthesis of pg e2 there is no inhibition on the synthesis of leukotriene b4 c4 d4 and e4 so the amount of these in the body increases as the amount of these increase in the body these precipitate asthma so the next one is occupational asthma in this patients the occupational habitat that is the place where these people work will be the cause of triggering asthma so the usual triggers in the occupational site are fumes such as epoxy resins and plastics organic and chemical dusts such as wood cotton and platinum gases such as toluene and chemicals such as formaldehyde and penicillin products so that's all for today's video pathogenesis and the other stuff of bronchial asthma will be covered in the next video If you like this video like share and subscribe to my channel and support me thank you